all this week as you're waking up and maybe yawning or struggling to wake up. We are reminding you about the importance of getting that good night's sleep. So if you're pouring more coffee than you should and waking up feeling unrested, you may be wondering if you actually have a sleep disorder. And today we'll show you the process of figuring that out and what kind of help is out there if you do. It's recommended that adults between the ages of 18 and 64 should get seven to nine hours of sleep. That's every night. So let's say you're getting that quantity of sleep, but you just never feel rested. Might be time to evaluate your quality of sleep. Doctors recommend a sleep study, and there are a number of places that perform them. This one, a location associated with North Kansas City Hospital, looks like a small hotel. A patient will go into the sleep center before their normal bedtime. They're allowed to go about their normal routine, taking medicines and eating whenever they want, but they will have a cutoff time for consuming caffeine. We start with the EEG. We're monitoring different parts of the brain that allows us to see whether or not a patient's awake, asleep, what stages of sleep that they get into. There are also sensors placed on the abdomen, chest, and legs to monitor movement. Obviously, the most common thing that the doctor is looking for is sleep apnea. Um, and so we're monitoring for the different types of sleep apnea. Patients are led through a short series of tests to calibrate the sensors. Breathe in and hold your breath as long as you can. Then they drift off to sleep while techs watch what's happening with the patient's vital signs. And falls asleep. And you know he falls asleep because There's, of the waves. There are waves there. This is a K-complex, and that's indicative of stage 2 sleep. In this case, almost immediately, it's apparent this patient is having signs of sleep apnea. So each one of these boxes is about 30 seconds, so that's wow. about 30 seconds. That's about Every 30, 30 seconds he's waking up. To breathe. And not wow. breathing, his oxygen level is dropping during each one of those events. A sleep study can also help diagnose other disorders, including excessive leg movements and narcolepsy. But sleep apnea is the most common disorder. With sleep apnea, patients wake up multiple times in an hour to breathe. Many times they don't even realize it, and their oxygen levels drop significantly. All that waking up can make them very tired. James Kinsey has obstructive sleep apnea. For years, he knew he was tired, but he wasn't entirely sure why. I would eat a little breakfast and then go sit down on the, on the couch and I was out. If you went to church, mm -hmm. you're falling asleep in church, your job, you know, you'd be at, at your, any time that I would go to work and go eat, eat a lunch and then come back, I'm gone. It, you know, that's not good. Right. Boss doesn't like to see that. And his overall physical health suffered. There was issues with weight gain because every time I'd wake up, I needed energy. So I was just anything I could get my hands on to, to just get the energy to get through the day. He was prescribed a CPAP and instantly noticed a difference after wearing it for just one night. It's really been a turnaround for me. One of the other thing is, is that it's changed so much is mood. I mean, if you're only getting an hour and a half, two hours of sleep, you're pretty hard to live with. And so th that's been a big. He imagined the CPAP would be a big clunky device and says he was surprised how small and quiet it is. If a CPAP is not for you, there are other devices out there, including a mouthpiece, patches, and even some surgically implanted mechanisms. Whatever you choose, you could be adding years to your life. It can increase the risk. Uh, for example, in the case of obstructive sleep apnea, it can increase the risk for heart attacks or strokes or high blood pressure or diabetes. A person getting inadequate duration of sleep, that there may be some links there in the long term to Alzheimer's. Um, or we know that a person who doesn't get enough quantity of sleep also has lower uh, immune function. They're more likely to get sick or maybe increased risk for cancers. Serious risks, perhaps none more serious than missing precious moments with your family. That's the way my daughter remembers me, is that, yeah, daddy's always sleeping on the couch and snoring. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I, I got to get fixed. He did, and now he's telling you to do it too. Go get tested. Yeah. Because it does. It, it's a, it can affect your whole life. Mm -hmm. And devices like this one here on my wrist are gaining popularity for monitoring sleep. So today at 8 a.m. you'll hear what doctors think of this sleep tech. And we'll also talk with Garmin about how exactly a sleep device works. So catch up on all of our sleep stories on fox4kc.com sleep.